Seabus. Hi, I'm Gary from Moltrite Websites, LawnAeration.com. So today I wanted to shoot a quick video to show you uh, one of the reasons that we do slice seating. Uh, I'm here at one of my uh, great customers' houses uh, once again. Been out here numerous times. About two years ago, uh, we did a lot of repair slice seating uh, on his backyard because he had some grub damage. Uh, this year it's a little different situation and I get this question a lot uh, when I'm out working about um, you know I've got a really nice looking lawn uh, but the problem is I've got some other varieties of grass in here um, some invasive species or some uh, turf type tall fescue in a bluegrass lawn or some nimble whale or some bent grass or zoysia whatever it might be um, when you get two grasses that don't uh, play well together uh, so I'm going to show you what the project looks like today and uh, why we would use our slice seeder to take care of this. So you can see that uh, my customer, uh, he works really hard on his yard and it looks pretty nice. Uh, we did repair some of this because of some insect damage a couple years ago, but it's came in really nicely. So you wonder why would we need to slice seed any of this? Well, take a look at this. Now you might wonder what happened to this? Okay, well, uh, what happened to this was intentional. Um, customer was aware that he had some uh, invasive grass like this growing in his bluegrass lawn uh, and this is an invasive grass species called uh, nimble will and you can see the root system of this pulls out really easily um, and the problem is when you have a really nice bluegrass lawn uh, like he does uh, it sticks out like a sore thumb and it'll start in a very small patch like we were pulling out and then the patch gets larger and larger and you know he said last year he had a couple small portions here and this year uh, it turned into this so if you let it uh, progress it's going to get worse and worse until eventually it takes over most of the lawn so the best way to get rid of this is uh, to eradicate the problem right right away so in order to get rid of the nimble wheel uh, you have a couple choices you can manually remove it and customer actually started doing that uh, so he, he started to tear out some of the grass in this area. And then he saw that it's going to be a lot of work. Um, and I'm kind of glad that he did stop because when we get to a bare ground situation like this, uh, it actually makes it more difficult for our slice seeder. Um, it's much easier if we slice seed in an area like this where it's cut short, um, but at the same time it's dead. Uh, now the customer went through and he actually sprayed this with a herbicide to kill it all so that's why it looks so brown um, but that's good for us so we're gonna get rid of all the bad grass um, he's already sprayed it to get rid of all the bad grass and then what we're gonna come back through is take our aerator and we're gonna aerate this to open up the ground and then we're gonna run our slice seeder through here um, to replant Kentucky bluegrass so that uh, this area ends up looking uh, like that area does uh, so sometimes when I tell a customer um, that they need to do a partial renovation like we're gonna do in this situation they get a little bit nervous um, understandably because you're gonna kill a portion of your lawn um, we'll actually recover this portion of the lawn in about three to four weeks to about 80 percent uh, coverage rate uh, so you know if you do it the right time of year and you have the right conditions to seed under uh, an area that is 100% dead will become about 80% healthy uh, in about four weeks. So uh, you can look through this area. We're actually going to slice seed through here also because uh, the turf through here is just a little pockety. Um, this area we could probably just aerate and overseed, but we decided to slice seed so we bring it in much more quickly and uh, much more efficiently, and it'll also match all the new stuff that we're doing. So I thought this video would be helpful because I get that question a lot. Uh, customers have been working on their lawn really hard and they have a beautiful uh, thick bluegrass turf uh, just like this and all of a sudden uh, they get something in their lawn that they don't want. A lot of times it might be a wide bladed fescue or it could be nimble will or something like that. Most of the time broadleaf weeds are controllable with your selective herbicides meaning that you can kill 
the weeds without killing the grass. But most of the time, a grassy weed is not controllable that way uh, because for, there's very few chemicals that do a good job of selecting something like tall fescue and killing it without killing the bluegrass. Uh, so generally, you'll need to use a non-selective herbicide if you're going to do a partial renovation like we're going to do now. So if you need help or you need assistance uh, deciding what's right for you, give us a call, uh, do your research, and keep watching my videos. I would appreciate it. We're going to slice seed this, and I'll show you what it looks like after we're done. All right, so we've got the lawn aeration done. Uh, now I'm going to uh, run the slice seeder. Uh, this is the slice seeder machine right here. Uh, we set uh, our seed rate here on the front. As you can see, I got my uh, bluegrass blend loaded up. Um, and it has blades in the bottom that will cut right through this uh, thatch. And, um, and it will just plant rows of seed uh, everywhere that we run the slice seeder machine. So that's our plan. You can kind of see over here. We have aerated in bare dirt and it's sort of opened up the surface quite a bit. Uh, and this is going to allow for us to get good seed down in there. And then our slice seeding machine is just going to cut lines uh, in, the, in the ground. So uh, let's get to it and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, well, I finished the aeration and uh, I finished the slice seeding. So as we finish up, you'll notice that the slice seeder uh, also doubles as a dethatcher. Um, so it will pull a lot of the dead thatch material out of a healthy lawn, or in this case, uh, a lot of dead material that's been sprayed. So uh, some of that thatch is really healthy when you're planting new seed. Let me uh, show you what I'm talking about. As you look close in these areas, you can clearly see the slices right through here where the slice seeder um, left its marks, uh, about an inch apart. Now in an area like this, I slice seeded it two or three times depending on the density 
uh, of the dead grass. Usually if it's a completely dead area, I'll go over it at least two times. Um, sometimes three if there's a lot of pockets and things like that. So I went over it several times. Uh, and as you see, there's quite a bit of clumpy um, thatch material laying up on the top. Uh, now, in a lot of instances, like over here, where we have about one inch of the thatch material and it's pretty even, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, when I have a little bit of that thatch, one, it, it absorbs moisture. So it, it allows the um, grass seed to stay moist through the watering cycles. Um, also, it's very similar to putting straw on top of bare seeding. Uh, it covers it up, it protects it from the hot sun a little bit when the first grasslings just start to germinate. Uh, so, uh, on the other hand, when you have large clumps like this that are three or four inches of thatch material, uh, what I usually do in that situation So, what do I do in a situation where there's three or four inches of thatch material or a large pile of thatch, I usually will first off, I'll take the blower and I'll spread it out evenly through the seeded area. That way it doesn't leave a clump. So sometimes when you have the clumps uh, on top of, let's say your lawn, uh, your healthy lawn, and you're mowing it and it's thick and you mow it and it leaves clumps of grass on top, you know how after a few days or a week underneath starts to get suffocated and those spots turn yellow because they can't breathe and it doesn't get any light. Same thing if you have excessive thatch when you slice seed. So in those situations, I usually will try to blow it so it's even, or I'll urge the customer to rake off any excess thatch uh, after we're done the seeding with the seeding process. So I've been out here before. This customer is great about his lawn maintenance. Uh, he wants to have the perfect lawn, which a lot of our customers just want the absolute perfect lawn. That's why we're out here doing this. I know it might seem, um, you know, a little obsessive to some of you when uh, the lawn looks pretty nice and you intentionally spray it to get rid of some, some things that don't match. Uh, but if you're really striving for the best lawn, this is one way to go about a partial renovation. Um, he's going to do a great job watering this, so I know this is going to come in uh, excellent. Hopefully, if you have some troubles like that, uh, or if you're wondering about renovation, this helps you decide maybe if slice seeding is the right option for you. Um, and you can either uh, get your own slice seeder, but you can notice it's a dirty job. Uh, it's hot, it's dusty, uh, so be prepared for quite a workload. Uh, thanks for watching my videos. I'm gonna cover a lot more seeding, lawn diagnosis, fertilization, and of course, lawn aeration. So keep watching, uh, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be seeing you soon.